Hi there, my name is Ivy and I write the blog Wake Up For Makeup. Today I have the new Urban Decay Born To Run palette to show you a look with. Urban Decay did send this to me and I was super excited to get to try it out. I had been seeing this online and thinking, oh wow, that looks like a really comprehensive palette that kind of has it all. Um, it's got a really nice mirror and it is full of mattes and shimmers, which I think every good palette is a balance of the two. There is pretty much every core color in here from your transition shades. It's got a true black, it's got a dark brown. Those are kind of must-haves. It has the nice lid colors. Um, so yeah, I think there's so many possibilities with this. Today, I'm going to show you this look. This is just kind of the one that I came up with first, first true go with this palette. I've been kind of experimenting with it here and there but I wanted to get a feel for it before I sat down and filmed a dedicated tutorial like this. I will have a full review on my blog um, about the formula, what do I think of it, but I will give you kind of a quick preview. Packaging wise, um, I like the size of this a lot. I, it's not particularly tiny for travel, even though it's got the whole travel theme. The packaging design itself, I will just say I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, it doesn't feel super special to me because it just sort of looks like some people's amateur vacation photos. <laughs> like, uh, there's all sorts of beautiful destinations. We've got Greece, we've got a wine glass here, so that's cool. But like some of these photos, I don't know, like this one, it's not really even that impressive of a photo. <laughs> so I don't know where these came from. They kind of just look like stock photos that aren't that exciting. So I don't love the packaging. It just doesn't like speak to me. As far as the formula of these shadows, these are something special. I feel like there have been almost too many Urban Decay palettes recently. Um, I can't even go back and think, so they've sent them to me and I'm getting backed up because there are so many that I really want to give a palette a chance and before I know it, they've got another one coming out. So there was the, um, the Naked Heat. I did really like that one. Then they did the Naked Petite Heat. Really liked that one too. There was the Distortion palette. It was very holographic and not very um, wearable. I used it for some photo shoots, didn't love it. Then there was the heavy metal palette as well. Um, again, I used that for photo shoots, but I didn't love it for personal use. Then I see they've got a beached one out now, or something about beaches. And I was like, okay, chill out. Like I barely got through the ones I already have. Oh my gosh, I already forgot. Um, the, the pink one, what is it called? Oh my gosh, I just used the blushes in it. It, I'm looking at it. Back talk. It's right there. Back talk palette. I mean, are you guys also feeling like palette overload from them? I mean, I just want them to slow down. Slow your roll. Back talk palette. Loved the colors. Did not love the formula. They were different in a bad way. They did not perform like true Urban Decay shadows, and that's why I didn't do a tutorial with that. This one, these are kind of back in the game. They feel the matte shadows, especially. I don't know how to explain this without it sounding bad. They're dry in a good way, like they're not super emollient and there's not a ton of fallout. They just, they're silky and, and dry in a good way. <laughs> um, the metallics, I haven't used a ton, but those swatched really nicely for me. And I feel like this palette is back to the Urban Decay formula that we know and love, that's easy to work with, easy to blend. Um, it's not as strange as some of their other palettes recently. And I'm wondering if this is kind of their um, what do you call that when like somebody is like, I don't know, they're like an actor gets in trouble and then they come back, their, their comeback film, that's what this is, it's like their comeback moment. So I um, will show you a look using this comeback palette from Urban Decay, that's what I'll call it, it's not called Born to Run, it's called the Urban Decay comeback palette. What do you think? If you would like to see how these shadows perform in an eye tutorial, please keep watching. First, I am going to start in the crease like always, and I'm going to use Weekender, which is this color right here. I would call it kind of like a, um, a blonde taupe color. It's not an ashy taupe, and it is not, um, it's not super warm either. So it's just like a nice neutral taupe color that makes a really nice crease color for light to medium skin tones. Probably more on the lighter side, honestly but we're going to build upon this. So I am just getting that in the crease on both eyes. My eyes are primed with Primer Potion in Eden. Don't think I've ever used any other primer on the history of my YouTube channel and the history of my life. So I don't even know why I tell you, because you know. 
All right, so we've laid a weekender in the crease and a little bit above just to kind of establish some dimension, but I do wanna deepen this crease a little further. So we are going to grab Riff, which is right here, which for medium skin tones, that might actually be a better crease color for you. And you might skip weekend altogether. And I am putting this more right in the crease, sort of wedging it into the eye socket. That sounds very graphic and painful. Um, a trick to keep it isolated in the eye socket area and not get out of control is to make sure your brush is pointing right at you. What is this? Perpen perpendicular? So making sure it's pointed right in there versus like if you were doing this, you're probably going to start getting it up higher than you want. So just make sure your brush is, I believe, perpendicular to your crease or the area you're placing it for precision. Okay. So we have deepened the crease dimension with Riff, and I think we'll add one more crease color before we move on. Um, you might as well. I mean, this palette's got tons of options, and there's no reason not to just really like fade things out, create really nice gradients, because they are there for you. So I think I'll use the same brush again. Um, and you know, the brush size is gonna depend on your eye shape. I've got, I've got big eyes, and I've got a lot of space, but this brush might be a little too big for smaller eyes. So just kind of go with your eye shape as far as choosing the crease brush. So I'm going to grab a shade that I really enjoy in here, Still Shot, which is a matte peach shade. Another color I think is kind of unique. I don't see matte peaches, at least not a ton, but I, I guess I don't because I don't, you know, buy the peach palettes that often. And I don't buy them, not because I don't like the peach color, I do. I, um, I do not like artificial peach scent, so it kind of prevents me from enjoying those peach palettes because they usually smell like peaches. I like the fruit, I just I don't like the pretend peach smell. All right, so with Still Shot, I'm gonna kind of bring this out a little bit. Almost go from your crease straight out, if you have my similar eye shape, just to sort of elongate it. And since my eyes are more rounded, I am always trying to create more of a elongated cat eye shape. I have cats. I need to look more like their mother. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to grab a smudge brush or just a smaller eyeshadow brush. This one's very old. This is from Sonia Kashuk, vintage Sonia Kashuk. Um, here's a fun fact while I take a sip of water because I'm hot and sweaty always, especially right now. Did you know Sonia Kashuk herself actually has nothing to do with the line anymore? She basically like sold the rights to her name. They don't even have the makeup anymore either at Target. It's just the Sonia Kashuk brush and tool line, which is awesome. But she doesn't even have anything to do with it anymore. It's kind of weird, right? Okay, so um, I think we will grab Punk, which is this deep, warm, sort of like chocolate brown at the bottom, and start to do an outer corner with this before we grab Hell Red. So I'm taking a little bit and I tapped it off, if you could hear that. And I am going to just kind of press this on the outer third if our eyelid were divided in two thirds. It's very pigmented, as you'll see. And surprisingly, not a ton of fallout. That's impressive. So I'm gonna take a little crease brush here, this has nothing on it, and start to soften the shape while I placed it in this little like pizza shape, I don't want it to stay that way obviously, so I am just going over the edges, bringing it just a little bit to the crease, but I'm mostly trying to keep it concentrated just to the outer third of my eyelid, but making sure there's an uh, upward angle at the end. We're all about lift. Can't really think of anything in makeup that you want a downwards line in. I think it's all about up and lift. I guess I see a little fallout, but very little, especially given how pigmented these eyeshadows are, at least this color. I haven't really explored them all. That's kind of why I'm doing this tutorial and I'm gonna keep doing tutorials, hopefully, or just practicing with this until I form like my opinion on this. I usually do know right away if I like a product, um, but I don't know. I just wanna make sure that my my first impression is accurate, but I do like it so far. I, at this point, I would say I like and recommend this palette for sure. So softening out our outer corner shape, which again was punk. All right, 
And so we're checking for balance. I'm looking down in a mirror as you can see. Um, but I am trying to make sure that I have the same amount of definition and I do notice this eye seems darker. So I'm gonna just dip my brush back in there and get a little bit more on there just so I have the same amount of darkness on both outer corners because it's all about balance. Balance and symmetry, okay? So we've defined our outer corner now. Now I think we are ready to jump in with that color. I hope it doesn't disappoint since I'm so excited about Hellride. I hope it's heavenly. <laughs> All right, so another Sony Kasha brush here. This I bought in a set and I love these little teeny tiny crease brushes. That's kind of what the shape is. Like it's shaped like a crease brush. I use them as like mini blenders. So I'm gonna grab Hellride on that little mini blender. Love that the bristles are white because I can see exactly how much I picked up. So I'm kind of going to add this color to the very outer perimeter, but bring it in a little bit just so I'm kind of adding a bit of a, a cherry to the chocolate. <laughs> you know, maybe I shouldn't do voiceovers because, or I should do voiceovers because when I do these talk through ones, then I just end up like rambling and saying weird stuff that I have to edit out later. So I'm going to back my hand down my brush. When you are doing little precise motions or any motions for that matter, you want them to look soft and diffused. And the further out you hold your brush, the more you will get that effect. If you are holding it too close in like a pencil, you're going to be smashing those bristles into your skin. You're not going to get a nice blend. It's going to be a patchy, weird shape. So consciously remind yourself throughout makeup, um, back your hand down, back your hand down, um, almost holding it more like, like a chopstick than a pencil. So I am bringing this into the crease a little bit, as you can see, kind of just decided to do that to warm up the whole look with that Hellride color. Again, I'm not getting a lot of fallout. I keep thinking I have probably a ton and I'm cleaning up as I go, but there's, there's really not a lot. So reloading my brush with Hellred. I almost thought I was calling it the wrong color for a second. So going over and into the outer crease, bringing it slightly in. This um, color selection is great for my specific eye color, which is green, um, but it would also look really nice on blue eyes, any cool tone eyes in general, since these are warm colors and they are more on the rosy side. I am looking into a mirror that's down here, obviously. I hope that you can see that okay. But I also, like, I have my contacts in, but I just don't have great eyes. So I sort of do feel like I'm guessing my way through this. I'm not nearly as close to the mirror as I should be. I hope it's turning out okay. So I normally would do the lid color at this point, but I think I want to kind of complete this, like, smoky perimeter and the elongated eye shape. So I'm going to take what I would consider a pencil brush. This is from Makeup Geek. It's kind of old. I don't know if they still sell it. It's called the Outer V brush, but I, I, I call this a pencil brush. So we want to kind of wrap some of this warmth and smokiness around the eye. And so that means the lower lash line. So I'm gonna build this and use similar colors that we did on top. So what was the first one? We used Weekender. I don't think that's gonna make a huge difference. So I'm just gonna go in with Riff, which was that second crease color we used. And I'm going to kind of connect to this outer corner of the eye and sweep Riff across to about, oh, I don't know, just past the inner half of my iris. I'm trying to look straight on here. So we'll do the same on the other eye. I mean, some of these shades have a little bit more fallout than others, but in general, I notice they have very minimal fallout, especially this Riff shade right now. Like, when I dip my brush in there, it's like hardly any kickback. Okay, so we put Riff on the bottom lash line. The next color we used was Punk, and then we used Hellride. So I think we'll do um, just a little bit of both. I don't want it to get too dark down here. Kind of my, um, I don't know if I have a signature look, but I tend to go light, lighter on the lower lash line lighter on the lower lash line. Um, both on myself and on my clients, I just don't like a heavy, dark lower lash line. I never have. I think your eye can very quickly get, you know, too heavy looking and droopy actually when you do that. So we've got um, punk on the lower lash line and then maybe I'll take 
our brush that we were using for Hellride to do that because I don't want this to get too muddy now. So I'm just gonna kind of go on the very outer corner and bring it up to connect to this like outer, outer extended part we've created. Cause we have gone past the outer, the natural outer corner of my eye because I want to elongate. I want to make my eyes seem more cat-like. Kind of my goal of life, you know, to be more cat-like. Okay, now we're ready for a lid color. Still wiping away and still very little fallout. Impressive, okay. So we're gonna need a flatter brush now because that's what you want for lid colors where you're doing more pressing, building up pigment. We're not diffusing and, you know, creating more of that wash of color like we have. So for lid color, I feel like this is where I always like flip flop. I can't decide on lid color because I'm like, you know, there's so many great metallic shades in here, but I don't want to do anything too dark. I do want to keep this more light. Blaze is a pretty cool color because it's almost like um, a peach duochrome. It's got a shift to it that is really interesting. Stranded is just a really nice champagne. And then there is Breakaway, which is a little more matte. I think that we will do, we'll do Blaze just because it's, it's a unique color. And I am kind of using all the colors in here that I find a little more unique compared to some of the palettes. So we'll grab some Blaze and do this pressing, dabbing motion, filling that blank space we have left. So of course on my skin tone, this is a you know nice light lid shade. I think on deeper skin, this could be maybe a little bit um, frosty looking, but it's got the duochrome to it, so it might actually be your friend. So pressing, dabbing motions more. I almost like press and pull sometimes when I'm doing a lid color and I'm really trying to build the color to the color that I see in the palette. Okay, so I'm gonna take Breakaway just because, you know, we've got it. We've got all these colors at our disposal. We might as well use them. So I'll just take this same brush again, grab a little bit of Breakaway and do an inner corner highlight just because that's always, almost always a good idea. When in doubt, inner corner highlight because it just is a little, um, a spot of light and I don't I'm not a big brow bone highlighter it's another weird signature thing I guess but I do like to do the very highest point only just under the highest point of your brow so all right I think we're good with the shadows let's move on to eyeliner and I am having an urban decay day I have all urban decay liners too I've even got a fresh new one I haven't opened it yet um, this is called Heartless. It's really neat. It's kind of like a unicorny pink color. I don't know how to describe this. I don't even know if you can see it on my spray tan hand there. But I'm going to use this in the waterline. I like to use a light metallic shade in the waterline to keep things bright and not too heavy. Because, you know, as you can tell, I've got some weird lower lash line fear. I just don't ever want this getting dark and gloomy down there. Okay. So we did our waterline, now we're gonna do our upper lash line with Urban Decay's 24-7 pencil in Alkaline. This is like a, a reddish violet color. Um, again, really gonna maximize the green eyes if you have green eyes like me. Um, so what I'm gonna do with this is I am going to kind of just get the color on there. I'm not gonna worry if this is a perfect line because I'm going to immediately grab a brush dip into our Born to Run palette and kind of smudge it out and smoke it out with shadow. So please don't worry if this part is not perfect. Um, you'll see it's not going to be. So I'm going to go from the outer corner, kind of lay it sideways and just sort of lay it down to get, get the pigment as close to my lash line as possible, tapering it inwards. And before this sets, which is about 30 seconds or so, I'm going to dip into Good Is Gone, which is a little bit less of a red brown get it on a flat brush and just kind of go over this smooth it out that's why i don't ever worry with pencil liners if it's not a perfect line because i'm gonna smudge it out anyways another cool trick you can do with a flat brush and shadow over liner is let's dip into punk just so you have a little lighter shade do this, hold the brush upright, so like that, and then sort of do this, like press and pull, press and pull, press and pull. And it'll kind of create like an automatic gradient where it's darkest at the base and it fades upwards. It's kind of a fun thing to do. 
um, to add like a more uh, faded out, smoked out liner. So same thing over here, grabbing our flat brush, dipping into Good Is Gone, smoothing our line out. And you know what else this does? It also helps to set the liner. If you have oily eyelids or it's just humid out or you're just one of those people you find your liner transfers really easily, this is basically setting like a liquidy cream product, your liner, with a powder, just like you would your concealer or your foundation. So it's gonna add some longevity, hopefully. So I'm gonna grab Punk and do that same little technique over here where I press and pull, press and pull. And I'm keeping this all pretty concentrated again to the outer third as far as the level of definition. It's all mostly on that outer third of my eye. So I'm gonna take our um, little blending brush again, just make sure this outer corner where all these colors meet pretty much, they almost all flow into that. Like it's, um, cannot think of the analogy. I don't know, something about rivers and tributaries. They're all flowing into this outer corner pretty much. Nature, man, I like it, but I don't always know the terminology. All right, so I'm looking straight on at myself right now. I guess I could look straight at you. And I need to see, do I need to adjust? Do we need to add any dimension on any area to even things out? I mean, from my angle right now, it looks pretty good. I would love to keep with the Urban Decay theme and use an Urban Decay mascara, but I actually don't believe I have any fresh ones to use right now. So we will use our new Glossier Lash Slick. This is a new product, so it's always good to test drive these. This is gonna be a more natural lash look. That's how I would describe this mascara. It is not, you know, big, fat, going out lashes, does not, um, for me, seem to simulate false lashes. It just, um, it definitely darkens them. It defines them. I don't feel that it adds a extraordinary amount of length or volume. If anything, I would say, let me see here. Maybe volume. Um, what is great about this mascara though, and who this would be best suited for is, I'd love for people to try it that find their mascara smudges no matter what and they you know, have to do waterproof because this really does not flake or smudge whatsoever on me. Probably more than any other one I've tried. And they say it's not a tubing mascara, they call it a film form mascara, which is a strange term. But there's something about this that is very, very budge proof. So if you're somebody that struggles with mascara traveling, I'd like to know if this works for you. I have dry skin and I don't really have oily eyelids, so it could just be a dry skin thing. So I've got my top lashes coated. I really like this on the lower lashes where you would want a more subtle mascara. I don't normally do eyes last, but I wanted to film some foundation application videos for my IGTV on Instagram. Anyone liking that? I don't know. I'm just trying it. I always try these new things. I actually really love new technology. I love stuff like that. So I just checking it out. I don't know. I think I like it. All right. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial using the Urban Decay uh, Born to Run palette. See, there are so many palettes. I almost called it the Back Talk palette because I got too many palettes in my brain and in my makeup room. Um, I have enjoyed using this so far and I look forward to using it more. That's kind of the sign that I do like a palette when I look forward to using it. And I do, I do look forward to using this more and more. Um, I hope that this has been helpful and entertaining. And if you have any questions, you can leave them below. If you would like more in-depth information on anything makeup related, please head over to my blog. It's wakeupformakeup.com. I am also on Instagram quite a bit. And my name on there is Ivy Savannah. I'll put it on the screen where I do inboxings, inboxings, unboxings, things like that. Um, I will hopefully see you very soon in another video.